Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Eggleston, and I run Course Report, which is a resource for students who are choosing a coding boot camp. If you haven't used Course Report yet, this is my one shameless plug. I do it in all of our videos. You can use our directory to find schools that fit your learning style. You can check out our blog for interviews with students and instructors and founders at boot camps across the world. And we've got application tips and virtual classroom tours like this one, and so much more. So because so many coding boot camps have moved online over the past year, year and a half, we've been sharing as many online classroom tours as we can with you so that you can do your research as you're trying to figure out which boot camp is best for you. And today, Kishore Pashinbla from Software Guild is here to walk us through the Software Guild online classroom. Thank you so much for being here, Kishore. Hi, Liz. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Of course. Well, Software Guild usually has classrooms all over the U.S., but even before the COVID pandemic, they had a remote classroom and have really been teaching students online for a while. So over the course of the past year or so, all Software Guild students have been learning in that remote classroom. And Kishore is going to walk us through the differences between Software Guild online and in person. He's also going to share his screen and give us a tour of the Software Guild online classroom. And he'll share some advice for students who are really trying to excel in an online boot camp and actually get a job when they graduate, which is the goal. So Kishore, thanks for being here. You are a technical trainer for the Java Bootcamp at Software Guild, which is one of the big programs that y'all offer. Um, so just tell us about your role as a technical trainer and tell us how you work with students. Yep. Um, yeah, my main responsibility as a technical trainer is to deliver the Java Bootcamp. Uh, I also deliver other programs, but the Java is uh, in the primary uh, the subject I deliver. And uh, my role is to inspire people to code. So my job is to make sure I engage them in, in the training and inspire them to write good quality code, I would say. So as an instructor, as a technical trainer, you are working with students live every day, teaching them Java? Yes, yeah. It's, it's uh, mostly online these days. Uh, we used to deliver uh, on-site trainings as well, on-site bootcamp trainings. But since cool. pandemic, yes, mostly online. I mean, there are a lot of remote boot camps out there right now, especially because everybody is, is you know, trying to teach online. So um, tell us what sets Software Guild apart in this landscape of remote boot camps. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, at uh, Sophie Guild, we have uh, a set of principles we follow. So first thing is about the, the standard. All the prospective uh, trainees of the students, they have to take an aptitude test where we understand the ability of their problem-solving skills. And also, we encourage them to go with uh, an introductory course. Uh, it's basically a, a pre-training course, we say, which is an intro introduction to web development which gives uh, some idea about how to write the code and so on. So it, it also encourages them to understand whether the coding is for them or not. So that's one of the, the key things. And apart from that, uh, we not only encourage people to learn about coding, uh, we also train them in soft skills, which is very important. So it's not just about writing the code. It's also about explaining the code. So we believe that the writing the code or coding and explanation is something called competence. So that's what we believe. So we uh, inco uh, incorporate the soft skills as part of our uh, bootcamp training as a compulsory module. So they can pick the from, uh, uh, I mean, that module, communication skills, soft skills, which are important in the, the real world workplace. Super and the next thing, yeah. next thing is about uh, all the, the, the statistics, the metrics of Software Guild or uh, verified by the council. So it's for the integrity, it's for the results, the, the reports, what we produce. And on top of that, all the, the students will get access to uh, the network we have, you know, all the employers, I mean, more than 450 uh, employers network we have. So they will have access to employers network where they can reach out to the employers, of course, with the help of uh, the, the career uh, uh, support team and they can reach out and they can uh, uh, apply for the best job, what they like, actually. 
And on top of that, we also have a alumni network where the guilds, basically guildies, we say. So all the alumni who graduated from the software guild, so they are there to help. So the guildies help guildies. That's what we believe. And there are more than 600 uh, uh, the graduates are there uh, as part of alumni network. So since 2013, uh, software guild added uh, more than 1,400 graduates to the, the workforce. So that's, that's something incredible. Okay, so high standard for admissions, soft skills, um, verified outcomes reporting. I know you all are a member of SEER, and that's amazing. Um, and a strong employer and alumni network. So that's definitely, you know, there's a lot there. Um, how long has Software Guild been teaching remotely? Uh, since actually 2013. So Since the Software very beginning. Guild, actually, the Software Guild... Uh, has started offering both type of uh, boot camps, on site and online. So uh, people can choose, uh, you know, whichever the best, uh, you know, options they want. Um, has anything huge changed about the remote program during COVID nineteen? I know that y'all have been teaching since twenty thirteen online, but was there anything that y'all had to change about the remote program in the last year or so? Uh, not much, to be honest. It's only about the, uh, um, you know, the majority of instructors. Uh, we used to travel across uh, the globe and deliver the events, the training events. But now, yeah, everything online. Um, we are utilizing the technology the, to the best. I mean, we are not uh, finding any kind of uh, difference. Like we are not missing out anything in terms of time management, in terms of uh, delivering the resources. So to be honest with you, it's going really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, with this, uh, I mean, the pandemic added some additional value to online uh, bootcamp in a way like people can attend from anywhere now. I mean, they don't have to, you know, travel or go into the, the office or the training center. So that's another advantage, I would say. Uh, I know it's, there are some challenges in terms of uh, uh, using the technology tools, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's positive so far. Yeah, so it hasn't, not a lot has changed for the students, but the instructors, obviously, things have changed because you're all teaching online. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. So uh, tell us a little bit about the boot camp. I know you teach at the Java boot camp, but like, what is the, um, what's the time commitment, the structure? Um, is, it, is this an asynchronous, synchronous program? Like, what can a student expect if they sign up for um, Software Guild? remotely yeah so our uh, java bootcamp is about uh, a 12 weeks program basically it covers all java basics intermediate java concepts and uh, advanced java concepts and it's it's both in terms of like synchronous asynchronous stuff yeah we we offer both types of uh, boot camps let's say that if it's uh, asynchronous it's best suitable for employees basically so work full time so they want to choose the the course they can do uh, you know, in in convenient, I mean, convenience time according to their uh, uh, availability. So I would say uh, both, uh, and we also deliver part time and full time. So full time, as I mentioned, uh, uh, twelve weeks. If it's a part time, they should go for ten months course. So it depends actually, um, you know, how people want to utilize their time. Great. So in either in the Java Bootcamp or the .NET. C sharp bootcamp, you can choose part time or full time, and you can yep. choose asynchronous or synchronous. Yep. Either way, if you're doing the asynchronous program, um, do you have like how flexible is it? Oh, we, we we basically uh, give uh, um, you know the same course uh, to both the uh, uh, synchronous, asynchronous, part time, full time. Uh, so the same course, but we set up milestones. Like, okay, so you should finish uh, this milestone after uh, maybe uh, within two weeks time. So we set up milestone and we, we uh, you know, constantly basically give uh, feedback how they're progressing and uh, they normally communicate with us through Slack or through some other uh, the communication medium and uh, get some clarity about the content, the pace they follow. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we basically... Um, go with some dedicated instructors for both, so, both sorts of uh, the, the boot camps and we are available to, uh, for them to see how they are progressing and uh, we also uh, see okay yeah, these are the topics they may need some extra time 
and we say, okay, yeah, you may take uh, maybe another week to finish this task, but make sure you also, uh, you know, continue with the next uh, module as well. So there is a lot of good guidance around timing. I feel like that's something that a lot of folks that they're looking for an online boot camp are, you know, can be worried about is like, am I going to be motivated to finish this? Am I going to stay on track and stay on course and be like guided through it? And it sounds like you've got that kind of um, those, that guidance around timing pretty set, which is great. Um, so you mentioned in the beginning that one thing that Software Guild takes seriously is standards for admission. Um, and so is there an ideal student for Software Guild? Like, does someone need to know how to code before they apply? Um, or what are you looking for in, in an ideal applicant? Actually, we welcome uh, uh, the trainees of the students from all backgrounds. So there's no specific thing we say, okay, you must have coding experience, which is good. Um, that's why we, we designed that uh, the pre-training course, that is the introduction to web development course, which gives some, some encouragement for them to just learn or uh, you know, apply some coding skills. And based on that experience, I mean, what we strongly believe that the course definitely gives some, some prerequisite for them to feel comfortable with the actual uh, training or the actual bootcamp, uh, the training. So that's that's pre-planned and it's working well. It's it's all about uh, um, proven strategy, I would say. Okay, so you don't have to be uh, experienced in coding before you apply, but you are going to probably go through that introduction to web development course before you actually start at Software Guild. That makes sense. Cool. Okay, so Kishore, could you share your screen and give us a little tour of the Software Guild virtual classroom? Yep, sure. So the daily routine is like, so we start up our, um, uh, our meeting at 9 a.m. So 9 to 4 is the standard time. First thing we start asking question about, what did you do yesterday? So this is a part of agile methodology or agile approach. So all our, all our uh, the bootcamp trainings are based on that agile approach. So I, I asked the, the students, what did you do yesterday? And what will you do today? And were there any roadblocks yesterday? So these are the three standard questions are posted or raised by the instructor at 9 a.m. And, and are they that, doing that communication in, uh on Slack or is that in a live classroom? Live classroom. Live classroom. So okay, cool. yeah, so it's live. And then once the all the, the questions and answers and once everyone, uh, you know, uh, responds to those questions. And the next thing uh, around uh, 9.15 or uh, 20, 30 minutes, we spend uh, that the stand-up meeting. After that, it's, it's just about uh, giving some introduction to the exercises. I mean, what they're going to do or uh, what sh they should consider as part of uh, that day schedule. So, okay, so these are the exercises you'll be working with. These are the challenge challenges you may come across and you should communicate or you should just uh, uh, ask questions where you think that you are unclear about the question. So these are some of uh, uh, the instructions from the, the instructor. And another thing will happen around 9.30, I would say, uh, a main lecture session, we say. So it's about, okay, if there is a topic, uh, we pick the topic and deliver maybe a 45-minute session or one-hour session from the instructor point of view as a main lecture session as part of that day. And then, then around 11 o'clock. So we say, yeah, there's a list of exercises you have. Uh, you can start working with the exercises. They are designed based on the real-world scenarios. So they can just rely on those exercise guides, work with the practical stuff. So the idea is, once again, um, when they do the practice, they may definitely need some assistance or some help, uh, some guidance, uh, um, you know, from the instructor. So it would be a great opportunity for them. And the good thing about this, uh, the material, what we advise, I mean, uh, Software Guild has created a lot of resources. Like if you check that there is a lot of theoretical stuff is there. Um, uh, students can go and check some of the, the videos. I mean, nice ones to understand what exactly the content which is given. So some people love to uh, learn uh, watching videos and going through the videos. So that's one of the other resources. So that's the, the usual startup. 
the the morning session i would say around uh, 3:30 in the afternoon um uh, normally i go and publish a new uh, intro- introduction to new material and all the instructors generally follow this standard so around 3:30 or 3:40 just before the end of the actual session and this is the material they should just go through outside the training hours so at software guild we follow or we use a, a flipped instructor mode so it's it's about uh, a, a blended learning so one of the other types of uh, the term we say is a blended learning where they do all sort of reading watching videos uh, the uh, all the embedded uh, the material they do it uh, outside the training hours so we finish at 4 uh, pm in the afternoon and the rest of the day uh they will have some time to just go through uh the material which has been published by the instructor so the idea is to encourage them to go through all theoretical stuff uh, outside the training hours and come back in the morning and uh answer any questions about okay any roadblocks or any uh, any um, you know other questions about the material and so on very cool i mean what i hear is that a student is guided through the curriculum in this learning management system um but also and and is also taught live by an instructor but also has time to learn things on their own and um has access to that to recorded videos and written material as well so that's a it's a lot of i mean i feel like any type of learner would find what their you know what their learning style is or teaching style is in in software guild which is really cool and there's one more point i can highlight um we release the content um module after module so we don't publish every every i mean everything or entire material in one go uh, because we encourage trainees to focus on a uh, single thing first and make sure they understand and then they move or to the next uh, um module okay this view is super helpful i think this is this is awesome and it's nice to see and to hear that it's like the instructor is kind of guiding you through the curriculum it's not like you log in on the first day and have all of this content there to to learn on your own um you're really being guided through those modules that's awesome cool and it was neat to see the uh, assessments and the quizzes i feel like that's a question that people always have is you know am i going to be taking tests as i go how am i going to know if i'm doing well or you know if i'm falling behind and it seems like there's a quiz and an assessment at, you know every so often with every with each module which is important that's what one of the the key items apart from the exercises the, there are some assessments we designed so exercises assessments all the practical stuff they do during the training hours and reading all the theoretical stuff outside the training hours and so we've got this learning management system which seems like super robust and very built out i mean you've been working on this for a long time so that's great um what other kinds of tools does software guild use to create you know community like how are students collaborating together working together pair programming remotely are they doing all of that over zoom or do you have proprietary um tools that you're using how does somebody communicate yeah i mean um i generally set up uh, the breakout rooms i mean all the instructors at soft giggle we rely on the breakout rooms which is one of the greatest uh, benefits of zoom these days and we Uh, set up the breakout rooms and uh, we uh, i mean i generally divide the the team or the group of uh, students into different teams and then send them into breakout rooms and they will uh, communicate uh, within breakout room uh, and then if at all if they need any help or guidance um, you know from the instructor's point of view then they will reach out through slack so that's one of the uh, the ways we encourage them to communicate and uh, other sorts of collaboration uh, stuff we we encourage them to do working with a git repository project so we use a classroom github or github classroom is one of the uh, uh, you know the features given by github so normally we set up the assignment there new assignment 
and they can just you can see the lot of groups are there so these are the ass ass assessments we designed and they can just work on the group and individual tasks so this is a, a you know another way of encouraging them to work in group a more collaborative way more uh, um, you know productive way i would say very cool do you have any advice for somebody who's about to do an online or remote boot camp um, about how to set up their classroom in their home Oh yeah, so this is one of the uh, the important things. We always uh, come up with some uh, software build guide. We say, so the course is based on these softwares, these tools, and all these things are prerequisite. We advise them to install uh, all the uh, you know suggested uh, tools and softwares before the training starts. Um, but some students may require some help and some guidance. So we during the the training time day one or day two we check uh, when there is a scope for practical sessions we check whether everyone is installed um, the, all the the required software so we encourage them to stick with uh, uh, the suggestion or the instructions given by uh, the software guild team so install those softwares so that you would not face any problems one of the the questions generally asked by the students about the memory or about the ram the capacity the laptop what sort of configuration should be and so on so we are experienced people so we know what exactly the minimum require we, uh, requirements they need to install or they need to have so we advise them to have a copy of guide before the actual training program starts so um uh, everything should be uh, uh, easy that way okay that makes sense that's great advice well, well that was a excellent tour thanks for thanks for sharing that with us and just a few more questions for you i'm curious of, uh, in the last year how things have been going with career services like how does what does career services look like for a remote student these days at software guild absolutely so their role is very important so from the instructors point of view we gave all the technical stuff and the, the you know the curriculum stuff and so on so during the training like uh, uh, um, uh, career support team they basically come up with uh, profile creation stuff like they create a profile they help with the uh, uh, resume preparation they help with how to basically Uh, uh set up the, the linkedin learning profile as well so a lot of uh, uh, the support they give apart from that they train uh, uh the students in 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 soft skills or interview preparation skills in other words interview preparation skills and they also help with some mock interview sessions so sometimes yes they come up with okay um uh kishore uh, we are planning to conduct this event uh, will it disturb the the session or will it be okay to do it so it's all uh, you know communication between uh, the uh, support team and the instruction team and then yes they just attend uh, those events um it's 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 uh, the very important for us like uh, software guild uh, to see the success of uh, our students you know the the placement and the getting placement for them is is ultimate objective so we do everything from our side and uh, uh, and also like we also do some technical mock interviews like from our, from the instructor's point of view we do technical mock interviews and so on so overall we say yeah uh, it, it starts from the profile creation resume and connecting to employer and making sure uh, the students are happy with the the job description and uh, they're willing to take up that job so uh, yeah all these things are going well um and we are happy with the the way uh, the teams are supporting and the students are also uh, cooperative in that in that front i know you're not a, a career coach so we don't have to get too deep into it but um are career coaches now helping students find jobs all over the country has that changed over the last year as as you know everyone has started you know attending software guilds online from anywhere in the country or has that always been the case since 2013 that they were helping you know place students into jobs outside yeah. of the cities where software guild has physical locations yeah yeah i mean they, it's been uh, the same standard i would say and uh, what they generally do like um, they conducts a survey 
so uh, survey questions posting uh, checking uh, uh, geolocation i mean if you're okay with that flexibility if you're okay to uh, relocate and so on so take the uh, the team takes uh, the input or the responses from the students first and then if they are happy with so and so location so and so employer and they guide them they they push forward forward their profile to that direction so it's 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 always a friendly uh, approach i would say so uh, and i can also highlight that a uh, software guild is 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 all about the student centric and uh, uh, making sure that they are happy with with our input and our service um, uh, and then go for uh, their uh, you know a career choice cool so we talked about the intro to web development class and that sounds like a great kind of you know beginner friendly or you know intro intro course to do before you do the full software guild boot camp are there other resources that you recommend for a beginner like our readers who want to break into tech any any favorites yeah yeah the, one of the the good things about technology is about virtual meetups so this thing is generally recommended and virtual meetups magazines about the it or infrastructure or computer science anything about technology uh, and uh, some of the code events basically uh, organized by big companies like oracle microsoft aws so they do some uh, uh, entry level uh, uh, code events everyone everyone can participate even the beginners or the com science non com science people they can just attend those events and they can learn about the technology as we know the the technology is is growing and the pace it's it's going with we know uh, we can't even imagine where it's it's uh, it's going so that's why i would say like yeah people have options to go with magazines and publication stuff used to be i mean is is a bit traditional approach now virtual meetups is a, is a great way to start with um so why do you think this moment is a good time for someone to do a remote coding boot camp and make that career change into tech um according to me actually there's no such thing like a good or bad time i would say the technology is always there it's it has been playing a tremendous role in our lives so having um at least one subject or one course or one skill set in it would definitely add some value so whether it's now i mean where it's going to play important role now or future it doesn't matter to be honest so it's definitely a fun uh, learning like the moment people start enjoying coding or uh, technical stuff um you know the sky is the limit well i think that is a great place to end so thank you so much kishore for joining and walking us through the software guild online classroom and sharing such great advice for anyone who's going through an online boot camp or the interview process after a boot camp even and um thank you so much for joining anyone who's watching let us know in the comments which boot camp you'd like to see a virtual classroom walk through with next we'll see you on the next one thanks kishore thank you Thank you.